at the Kingdom, Dick Nichols, Mike side with Larry McMillan here on KGY Olympia, 1240 on your dial. The officials for this Rainier Reardon State B11 football championship game, referee, a longtime friend of ours, Bill Cheatley from the Lower Columbia Association, head linesman Larry Hewitt, the umpire is Doug Lewis of Chelan County, Hewitt is from the Pacific Northwest Association, and the field judge is Jerry Meyerhoff of Western Washington. Later on today, of course, Tumwater and Mount Rainier will play each other for the double-A title here on KGY. A look at the starters offensively for the host team, Rainier. Shane Schutz, a 5'8", 115-pound junior, will be the split end. The left tackle, Marty Spillman, 6'3", 170, a junior. The center, Josh Walker, 6 feet tall, 165, a senior. The right guard is Paul Griffith, 6'1", 245, a junior. He is a great one. The right tackle, Tony Nicometti, 5'11", 175-pound senior. And the tight end is Jim Willis, 6'2", 170, a junior. Quarterback Jason Congdon, 6'1", 170, a senior. Only 20 complete passes all year long. These guys just flat don't like to throw the ball, although they did put it up 16 times in that win against the Adna Pirates. For Reardon, the left end offensively, Chad Wilborn, 160-pound senior. Tom Miller, 170, a senior. The left tackle, David Sprecker, 145-pound freshman. The left guard, Curtis Bennett, 5'11", 150, a junior at center. The right guard, 150-pound senior, Scott McCall. John Marriott, 5'11", 190, a senior is the right tackle. Todd Soliday will be their right end in their wishbone attack. 150-pound senior. Jason Graham will be the quarterback, 175-pound senior. Jeff Peets and Dale Fleece, 155, 170-pound seniors, respectively the left and right halfbacks. And a big sophomore, Ken Johnson, 6 feet tall, 220, will be the fullback. Reardon will kick off the football. Their kicker is, Rod, is Jeff Peets, who will be a defensive back and an offensive Halfback as well, the deep kick coming down to the Rainier Mountaineers. Return out over the 10, the 20, up to the 25, and to about the 30-yard line. On the return for Rainier, Joe Warner, who will be the fullback in their offense. Soliday and Rodrigo Lodi, the uh, kicker, with, did the job for the Reardon football team. And so Rainier, as they say, the ball is at the 29. Rainier to the football at first down 10 at the 29. Running room to the right in the wishbone. Quarterback Congdon, his first year of ever playing. Fullback turns. And the give is to the fullback. Warner going right up the middle over the 35 and plows ahead over the 39. Should have a first down as Jeff Peets, one of the defensive halfbacks, makes the stop. And Larry, nice ball handling by the quarterback. The uh, fullback actually had it, but he went through the fake so well it looked like a halfback. Well, in the wishbone offense, Dick, as you know, uh, misdirection is the key, trying to get the defense to go for the fake. That time, just a quick dive handoff. Good play for the Mounties. Congdon on first down. Again goes to the fullback, and he powers ahead over the 40 up to the 45-yard line. A solid five-yard gain on the play. Jeff Peets and Scott McCall on the stop for the Reardon football team. Reardon defensively will do a lot of different things. They'll do some blitzing 
Uh, among other things, they essentially use a six-man front, sometimes eight, sometimes they'll go in a four. Rainier to the football, quarterback back to throw, loops it outside, catch is made by shoots in Reardon territory for a first down near the right sideline at about the 48-yard line. Shane shoots the wide receiver getting the pass. Will now check out as Kevin Sprowski who comes in for him with messenger service. Dale Fleece on the stop for the Reardon Ball Club. The Rainier has moved for two quick first downs. Well, Dick, one thing that you'll see with two teams that run the wishbone is that they know what's going to happen both offensively and defensively because they practice against it each day. Rainier will throw the ball more today to try to offset that eight-man front that Reardon puts up. Here's the handoff to Overly after a fake to the fullback, and the little halfback gets just about back to the line of scrimmage, if that much, and it'll be second and long, about second down and 10. Jeremy Despain, 175-pound junior outside linebacker on the stop, no gain. Well, that time the Rainier Mounties running the to the line of scrimmage shoots. Back in with a play, splits out to the right side. Good running room both directions. Wilson, the tight end, lined up on the left side. They're in the bone. Quarterback Congdon, a senior, playing his first year of football. Fumbles a snap from center, grabs the bobble, just tries to make something out of it and loses two. As the ball just came out of there, he grabbed it in midair and then knocked down for a two-yard loss by Richie Wilborn and Jason Graham. If you look at the lineups for these ball clubs and you're used to covering double a or triple a football you find an offensive rainier line averaging 169 up against a 172 and a half pound defensive front not real huge teams these are much smaller schools quarterback congdon with the ball straight back to throw setting up a screen loops it over the head of the intended receiver and it goes incomplete that was steve miller the halfback on the left side going out for an attempted screen pass doesn't get there, and Rainier unable to move there in 4th and 12 will have to punt away the football. Rainier's punter is Brady Florek, and he'll drop back inside his own 40. The Reardon football team with Pete says the deep man, and here comes a little bit of a rush, but the kick is out of there, end over end, down field. Pete makes the grab, hit hard by Sprowski, or check it just as he gets the ball, was hit by Jake Walker, straightened up and then knocked down at the 25-yard line. Excellent coverage by the uh, Rainier Mountaineers on the punt. A 30-yard kick, and uh, it'll be first down 10. Reardon with its wishbone attack for the first time. They'll have the ball at the uh, left hash mark, moving from your left to your right at the 25. Out of the huddle, they come to the line of scrimmage. Split a receiver out to the left side. That is Wilborn. Here's a deep pitch to Peets on a sweep out of the wishbone to the right side. Breaks a couple of tackles. Comes over the 30. Finally run out of bounds at about the 32-yard line at the right sideline down below by Kevin Sprowski and Joe Warner. So not a true wishbone play there to start things off for Reardon and a nice gain on the first down. Dick, I think one of the things that each team likes to establish or wants to establish is whether or not they have the speed to get to the corners. If you can run to the outside, then anything back up the middle, traps and counterplays are going to be more successful than if you can't get to the outside on the offensive end. They got about eight on the play and a little more. Call it second and a short two. Hand off to Fleece. Big hole. Cuts back over the middle, out over the 40, and dives ahead to the 45-yard line. Tremendous blocking in the middle, and Fleece gets the first down. Warner on the stop for Rainier. Trap play that time run to the left side where they really got the defensive tackle of Rainier. Influence to the outside. Cut back to the inside for a first and ten. Out of the huddle they come in the wishbone. Wilborn, Chad Wilborn, split to the left. Now they have a slot left and a wing to the right. Only one lone running back in motion comes Peets. They fake the in hand off on a counter play inside the middle and a fumble by Fleece and it's picked up by Rainier. And the Mountaineers will have a first down 10 at about the 47-yard line in Reardon territory. David Marcus, a defensive end, getting over on the ball. Steve Miller hit him hard, fleeced just as he cut into the middle on the counter play, made him cough it up, and Rainier with a good break has the ball first down 10. No score, 8-11 to go first quarter. 
Shoot splits wide to the right, the wide side of the field. In that wishbone formation, in behind Congdon, the quarterback, gives it off to Miller, running in behind the fullback inside the 45, and down around the 41-yard line. Nice pickup on the play of about six yards, stopped by Fleece and Johnson. Johnson, an inside, uh, or Fleece, an inside backer, and Johnson coming over from the outside, but a nicely blocked play. They'll give him about five, call it the 42. Second down, five. Out of the huddle comes Rainier. Over the football at center, Josh Walker, split receiver Sprowski out to the right side, running room that way. The turn, the handoff to Overly, trying to find some running room as he slants on a little cross buck over the left side, gets it to the 40, picked up a couple on the play, will bring up four Rainier, third and a short three yards to go. John Marriott and Tom Miller in on the stop. Marriott, 190 pounder, inside backer, and Miller, who's a defensive lineman, weighs 170. These people are, uh, by comparison in size, the B-11 school is much smaller than you would see with, as I said before, the AA and AAA teams generally. Good running room both directions. Shoots in as the wide receiver splits to the right. Congdon hands off to Miller, trying first down yardage, but I don't think he'll have it as he cuts over right guard, trying to follow the lead block of his fullback, Warner, and he'll get close to a first down, but I think he's a little bit shy. And Rainier will be up there in fourth and less than a yard to go to Spain on the stop along with Fleece. That time a good job, good surge by the defensive line of the Reardon Indians against the Rainier Mountaineers, stiffening up, controlling that line of scrimmage and stopping Rainier on third and four. Rainier up there at fourth and less than a yard to go. Split receiver out to the right side. The quarterback, Congdon, with the football, fakes to the fullback, gives it off to Overly on a cross buck from right to left. He'll have the first down as he gets it to about the 36-yard line. Good lead block by the fullback. Little cross block over on the other side, and they get the first down. And then some, Graham, Josh Graham, once or Jason Graham, once again on the stop. Good job that time on fourth and one. It, a team that's not afraid to go for it has to uh, get some momentum, has to have the adrenaline really flow from the fact that they were able to pick up that first and ten. In the wishbone in a scoreless ball game. Handoff to the first man, Warner, the fullback. Spins over the right side and will get short yardage on the play. Joe Warner, 185-pound sophomore. Tom Miller, 170-pound defensive tackle, makes the stop. They're going to give him one yard to the 35 and a ball length beyond that. And it'll be second down, nine Rainier. Sprowski back in with a play. Splits to the right side. Running room this time to the left as they scrimmage off the right hash mark. Congdon back to throw. Loops it out. Have Sprowski with a catch at the 30 at the right sideline. Goes to the 25 and knocked down around the 24-yard line for what is a Rainier first down. Todd Soliday coming up from the secondary to make the stop. 5.15 to go with a stop clock on the air. The clock stopped on the out-of-bound play, and Rainier will have a first down, no score in the first quarter. Dick, the Reardon Indians playing a 5-4 defense for the most part, a 54, basically the old Oklahoma that Bud Wilkinson made so popular, and Rainier is able to throw against them on the outside. This time they split shoots out to the other side of the field, hand off to the weak side, or the right side goes to Miller, going from left to right, a little slant, and he'll get, oh, maybe a yard on the play around the 23 stop made by Ken Johnson and Jason Graham in the secondary for the Reardon Indians. So second and nine Rainier in this scoreless first quarter. Dick, this has to be a real boost of uh, confidence for the Rainier Indians. They had a drive to start the game, gave the ball up on a punt, got it back on a fundal fumble and now are sustaining another drive I think that's a plus for the Mountaineers running room this time to the left Sprowski's sp right handoff goes inside again to Miller and just as it looked like he would break for some daylight he gets hammered and nailed after a gain of a yard or two on the play by Tom Miller who filled the hole as a defensive tackle and knocked him down that was a fine defensive play if he gets by him it would have been a substantial gain Dick and there was a hole there Rainier had influence blocked to the other side and the nose guard had, had gone with the ball. They came back on the counter play or the cross buck play, and uh, there really were the makings of a big play for the Mounties, but a good job by Miller stopping it up. 
Third and eight, Rainier with the football. Congdon play fake, back to throw. Loops it intended to shoot. Leaping grab inside the 10 down to the six yard line and knocked out of bounds on the left sideline down below. Excellent coverage defensively by Monty Soliday, a freshman. Shoots just uh, went up and got that football. Nice play fake by Congdon and an excellent catch by Shoots for the first and goal. Well, it was a great play by Shoots and a fine throw by Congdon, Dick. I'm not so sure that the flag couldn't have been thrown for pass interference because Soliday, the defensive back, had his back to the... Uh, to the ball to the quarterback the whole time never did turn around and see where the ball was until Schutz had caught the ball Sprowski in with a play splits out to the right side first and goal at the six the quarterback hands it off to Overly fumbles the football as he bangs down around the five and it rolls back five yards out to the ten and is recovered by the Reardon Indians John Marriott getting on the ball so Overly struggling for a little extra room as he went forward hit hard and the ball jarred back five yards tough break there for Rainier good defensive effort by Reardon well in the middle Reardon's been extremely tough to run on where Rainier has had success has been outside the tackles that time Overly as you mentioned just working a little hard trying to get something make something happen the ball popped loose and Richie Wilborn recovered the ball Okay, reared into the football in their own wishbone formation. Here's a little delay handoff. Coming up the middle is Pete's, or check it, Fleece. And after a fake to the first man and a little delay out over the 15 rolls ahead to the 17-yard line, Joe Warner on the stop for Rainier. About an 8-yard gain will bring up for them. Well, seven and a half yard gain will bring up a second and a long two. Dick, the Reardon Indians appear early on to be able to run the ball a little better than Rainier has been successful at it. They uh, are a little crisper at blocking off the offensive line. Quarterback on that little almost sprint draw type play. Hands it off again inside. This time it'll go to Pete's. And he wraps over the left side out around the 20. And may have a Reardon first down if they advance the ball where the official's lead foot is lying. And we'll just have to wait and see. The football straddling the 20 is just inches shy of a first down, so we'll have a third down play here and literally inches to go for the Reardon Indians. No score in this first quarter. 2.44 left in the opening period. The B-11 title game between Rainier and Reardon. They'll be up in the wishbone. Quarterback will sneak it straight ahead and getting it easily, Jason Graham. He's six feet tall, 175 pounds senior. Handles the ball really well. Just straight ahead on the sneak, clear out to the 23, three-yard gain for the first down. Greg Myers on the stop defensively for Rainier. Good surge in that offensive line by Reardon. Yeah, I think that's the difference in the two running games. There have been a couple of turnovers thus far in the ball game that have altered the flow, but the the line and the the line play of the Reardon Indians is really a factor here. There's an inside handoff for a couple of yards. For the Reardon Ball Club from the quarterback giving it off to Peets. Graham to Peets gets two, and it'll be second and eight as Jake Walker is in on the stop along with Joe Warner for Rainier. Walker, 6'1", 180, a senior. And this Warner kid's impressive physical specimen, 5'10", 185, a sophomore. And the football mark at the 25 on the hash mark, or just inside the hash mark from the right side. Split receiver out to the right, and a slot man, Peets, comes in motion left to right, fake to the fullback, give to the second man, Fleece with some running room over the 30, grabbed by the ankle, and pulled down up around the 33, shy of a first down, but not by a whole lot. David Marquis got him by the ankle, or he might have broken that one a long way. David Marquis playing the cornerback on Rainier's right defensive side. The Reardon Indians put a a man out there in a split position. He came in motion back to the play, and then they ran a counter play back uh, against Rainier's right defensive side, broke through the line. David Marquis with a saving tackle. And that is a first down just over the 33, so Reardon to the ball. They hand off again Fleece, the guy they really like to run, and you can see why twisting and spinning works his way ahead to near the 40-yard line on that first down play. Good blocking again and hard running David Carroll on the stop along with Vernon Hayden for Rainier. They'll mark the football at the 40, and that's going to be a gain of almost seven yards, second down, and really a long three to go. But Reardon moving with authority. A lot of green ahead of them, recovering a fumble after Rainier had a first and goal 
down at the six. Then Rainier fumbled it in Reardon and started the drive from there. Quarterback fakes to the first man, give to Pete's haul down and haul down hard as he does a little counter over the right side and two Rainier Mounties Warner there along with Jake Walker to make the stop and on the game you know, maybe a half yard still third and about three. Nice job of closing down on that cross buck action play that Rainier ran. A great job by Warner on the outside or on the inside and Walker on the outside to keep that from being a big gain. Out of the huddle they come to the football on a third down play, handoff, a dipsy do move to the inside, sweeping to the outside, getting a first down and more is the ball carrier, Chad Wilborn, and he's going to go all the way as he breaks through tacklers at about the 40, dances to the left sideline, and he is just gone for the score. So they put Wilborn, who'd normally been a wide receiver, in as a running back, handed off to him on a little reverse. He goes from right to left. Rainier really conscious inside, and Wilborn is gone for the score. And Reardon breaks on top with six seconds to go in the first quarter. Dick, the play was designed to go off tackle. Good job by the Rainier Mounties of plugging up the hole on the inside. Wilborn broke to the outside. David Marquis missed the tackle on the sideline, and Wilborn went all the way. The ball down, the kick for the extra point on the way, and it won't be good by Rodrigo Lodi. So with six seconds to go in the first quarter, they'll come up the field for the Reardon kickoff with the score as we pause a half minute. Reardon six, Rainier zero. Standing left and right at about the 10. Kick comes downfield, overly retreats, kind of bobbles it in midair at the 5. Straight up the middle over the 10, 15 to the 20, and Bubble. hammered, and down he goes. Fumbled the ball, but I think he got it back. It just bobbled into the air. Then he recovered it, so he'll get about a 15-yard return on what is the last play of quarter number one. Jim Schultz on the stop for the Reardon Indians, and the first quarter has come to an end. Let's pause here with our score after one Reardon six, Rainier zero. And ten, they're going to mark it at the 21 after the kickoff return. So Rainier will have it there, first down ten, trailing 6-0. As we start quarter number two here on KGY Olympia, 1240 on your Dallas Sports Voice of the South Sound area. Congdon, the quarterback, back to throw on a little play fake, is hit behind the line of scrimmage, dumps the ball off and into the hands of uh, one of his linemen who dropped back to try to set up the screen. That was Robert Hanna, who then went down at the 13, and we have a flag on the play. And going to be intentional grounding the call as Congdon was down now they wave an inadvertent flag and I think they're gonna say it wasn't intentional grounding they're gonna give it a completion for minus yardage the first indication was intentional grounding but the official then uh, I think didn't realize when he threw the flag that the ball had actually been caught by the lineman so he threw a flag for grounding but since the ball was caught that's waved off and they're gonna lose Big yardage on the play, eight yards, second and 18. Slot to the left for Rainier. Hand off to Overly, trying to sweep from the right to the left side. He's going to be hammered. It can't turn the corner, and we'll go down at the 10-yard line. Rainier loses three more, and we'll come up in third and 21 as John Marriott made the stop, and Reardon really able to tee off there, Larry, and they're getting Rainier in some serious trouble. Congdon handing off in the middle, Warner the fullback, and not a whole lot of running room. In fact, got nothing back to the line of scrimmage, and they're up there in fourth down and ready to kick it out. Ken Johnson, 220-pound sophomore linebacker, on the stop, and it looked like there, Rainier, just kind of positioning the ball, content to kick it out and get another offensive series going later on. Rainier's punter is Brady Florick, and he'll drop right back to the goal line to kick the ball. Pete's waiting at the 43, and here comes a bit of a rush. He gets it out of there. Towering kick downfield. Pete's get at his own 49. Breaks through, goes to the 50, 45 to the right sideline, the 40, 35, 30, 25, and finally hit down inside the 20, inside the 15, and knocked out of bounds 
One official standing around the 11. He may have stepped out around the 20, however. Robert Hanna actually with the final push to get him out of bounds. And when it's all done, they'll spot it around the 18-yard line. The... Uh, 29-yard kick for Rainier and Pete's with an excellent return. Actually, it was a 41-yard punt to give him due credit. The handoff to Fleece trying to run and gets nothing this time as he heads over the left side. Rainier down low on defense and uh, stuffed him and knocked him back for a loss of about one. Second and 11 at the Rainier 18-yard line. Greg Myers and Paul Griffith, the big kid Griffith, uh, in on the stop. The return on the play, by the way, on that punt was 34 yards, so you get a 41-yard kick and not much net out of it. But up there now with what almost looks like the run and shoot. Here's a handoff on a reverse going from left to right. Pete's inside the 20 and angling off toward the right side. Hash mark will go down around the 15-yard line. So a nice little gain on the play. They got some of it back as David Carroll comes up from the secondary along with J Jake Walker, the defensive end do on the play, and they'll mark it at the 16-yard line, third and about nine for Reardon. Indians leading in the ball game, 6-0, out of the huddle to the line of scrimmage in the wishbone formation. The turn, play fake, pass downfield, incomplete that time intended to the tight end, breaking left to right over the middle, Todd Soliday. Nice fake by the quarterback, Jason Graham, on the running play, and the pass went incomplete. Kevin Sprowski defensively and Joe Warner there on the coverage, fourth and 11. Lodi back to try a field goal from the 23 off the right hash mark. The ball is down. The kick is on the way. A 33-yard field goal. It's there. Excellent effort by Lodi, who earlier missed a uh, an extra point kick. And uh, he has three, but hold everything. Let's see whether or not this will go or not. And, that, uh, and there it is. You can see it now. Now, I wish they dropped those things where blind people like me can see them easier. Anyway, that's a holding penalty. A 33-yard field goal is wiped out, and maybe they'll try it again, and maybe not. I guess they will, and they'll put it down at the 33-yard line, and uh, trying for a 43-yard field goal this time off that right uh, side. It's inside the hash mark, and it'll be coming from Lodi. Gets it up there. This one is partially blocked. Goes inside the 10. Spowski of Rainier at the 5 breaks to the left sideline to the 10 and run out of bounds as he returns it up to about the 16 or 17 yard line. And so the field goal attempt blocked and Rainier dodges that bullet trailing 6-0 and then we'll have the ball. And then Sprowski picking it up on the hop back at the 5, returned it out to the Velo Market at the 16. First down 10 for the Rainier Mounties at that point. Handoff goes to the fullback, Warner, trying to find somewhere to run inside, and he'll be up to the 17 or 18-yard line for a gain of a couple. Not much more than that. Josh Graham on the stop along with Dale Fleece, and the going is simply tough inside. Split receiver for Rainier out to the right side. Congdon back to throw, has a little time, winds up, throws a deep pass downfield. Caught by Sprafsky out over the 45 and down just inside the right sideline. Soliday right there with him in the coverage. Sprafsky, a great basketball player, 
made a basketball leap there with he's going downfield almost backwards. A great catch at the 49 for a first down. Thirty-one yard gain for the first down handoff to Overly, and he goes over midfield, but but not by much. They're going to have at most a long yard gained on the play. As again running inside, very very difficult. The near backs Miller and Overly are Smurfs, as Coach Dan Schutz calls them, little guys. And if the blocking's not perfect, they just aren't going to go too far. Marriott and Johnson, a couple of big guys on the stop between them, weigh 410 pounds and over he weighs 137. He wasn't going too far. Second and nine. Quarterback Congdon, hand straight ahead. Warner, the fullbacks are hard running this time inside the 45 and will bang down to the Reardon 42 where it'll bring up a third down and one. Hank Jackie... In on the stop, Josh Graham helping him. Jackie, an outside backer, six feet tall, 185, a senior, has also been playing fullback for Reardon. Pretty strong guy. Third and one, Rainier at the Reardon 42. Running room to the left. Split receiver shoots to the right. Handoff, twisting and turning. Miller will have the first down to the 40, and maybe a ball length inside that, so Rainier keeps the drive alive. 5.51 to go here in quarter number two, trailing 6-0. Kenny Johnson again on the stop for the Reardon Indians. Sprowski split to the right, running room left, Congdon play fake, fires a pass over the middle intended to the tight end, Jim Willis, 6'2", 170, a junior, it goes incomplete. He was open, but it was had to be perfectly timed and thrown and just thrown over his outstretched hands, incomplete, second and ten, good play call, good concept, they didn't quite get it there. Running room again to the left, shoots split to the right. Here's a toss sweep outside to Overly, getting a little room and then cut down as he goes inside the 40 to the 37. Looked like he might get a little morbid, but the Reardon Indians really pursuing well to the ball. Todd Soliday, defensive uh, safety, coming up to make the hit along with the uh, other defensive safety, Jason Graham. And just when it looked like Overly might have some room, it really closed down. It'll be third down. And about seven and a half yards to go. Sprowski in with a play, splits off to the left side, scrimmaging off the hash on the left side, running room to the right. In the wishbone formation, Congdon back to throw, chased out of the pocket, rolls right, hit and hammered down back at the 47 yard line, and he really took a shot from Ken Johnson and Congdon down on the play, was just straightening up and starting to go and just got drilled. That was a major league hit by Johnson. Huge loss on the play for Rainier. Tending to um, his left leg as well and getting it immobilized so that it looked like the, the blow was up around the head and the neck, but it could very well be that it was an injury as he went down. Something was twisted because you can see on the screen down below they are wrapping his uh, leg, his right leg, and that's apparently where the injury is, and that's not good, but I always hate to see a guy with a head or neck injury, so this is better than that. Well, at least... Uh, Jason Congdon is is awake and aware of what's going on, and and he doesn't appear to be in in severe excruciating facial pain. So uh, we'll be hopeful that things will go well for the young Rainier quarterback, and they'll get him off the field and uh, see if they can do something there. If they can't, then they'll take him into the locker room and look at uh, some pictures. I'm sure. Yeah, that's exactly what will happen. Now Rainier will come to the ball. 
I think Vernon Hayden, 5'11", 165, a senior, has come in to replace him at quarterback. And uh, they go back, and it was a fourth down play and long coming, and so they're going to punt the football, taken at the 10-yard line by Peets of Reardon, hit and ankle tackled at the 14. The kick by Steve Miller for the Rainier Ball Club, and then Travis Overly makes the tackle, and it'll be Reardon's football first down 10, leading in the ball game 6-0 with 4.19 to go in quarter number two. Dick, it was a 38-yard quick kick by the Rainier Mounties. Not a bad play considering the circumstances. Well, you're up there in fourth and very, very long anyway, a punting situation, but they had Miller kick it out of the short punt formation. In motion goes Peets for the Reardon Club. They hand off on a counter play, slanting from right to left and coming up the middle fleece up to about the 16. Didn't fool them too much on that one. Gain of a couple at the most. Second down and long stop made by David Carroll for the Rainier Mountaineers who have had their quarterback Jason Congdon take it off the field and uh, they'll be checking his well he's still down there now I check he's on the bench down below as the attendants take a look at his right leg to see if it's a knee problem exactly what we have here's uh, the Reardon football team with a toss sweep outside and the guy that scored the touchdown Wilborn over the 20 25 30 coming up the left sideline for a first down and plenty more though there's a flag back at the 25 hauled down on the left sideline at the 34 big gainer on the play of about 16 yards, but I think this will come back on clipping David Carroll on the stop for Rainier, and just as he turned the corner and started upfield, somebody got blocked either in the back or a clip, and uh, in either case, this is going back. Yeah, that particular play, David Marquis, the cornerback, was being blocked by Soliday, who was playing on the outside for Reardon, and Marquis trying to play him off as he turned to go to make the tackle. Soliday took him down with a clip, and that's the play that got the flag. So that'll rock off uh, or 15 and take it down to the 15 and a half. Call it the 16-yard line, though it's a little bit shy of that. And for the Reardon Ball Club, it'll bring up a second down play and just about 10 yards to go. They may have a half yard more than they had when they started this drive. Running room to the right, play fake, back to throw. Graham, the quarterback, hold down behind the line of scrimmage, a sack back inside the five as Jake Walker comes pouring in there along with David Carroll to get him down, and they'll say he's down at the two, a loss of 14. Big play by the Rainier Mounties, trailing by six with 2.50 to go in the half. One of the few times that Reardon has shown pass and actually gone back two pass and a great rush that time by Jake Walker who got in there also uh, 15 David Carroll with a good push from the outside for the Mounties third and very very long for Reardon they have to go to the 25 and uh, a little bit call it the 25 yard line to get a first down third down and 23 here's a pitch out into the end zone to Wilborn hit just as he comes out of the end zone on a sweep to the left side and will go down around the one yard line so it's going to be fourth and 24, and they'll be punting out of the end zone. David Carroll again on the stop, the defensive outside on the right side for the Rainier Mounties, who now call a timeout with 2.08 to go in the half. Let's pause a half minute here. The score is Reardon 6, Rainier 0. And Reardon ready to punt the football. Peets does it, and they don't put much on him as they kick it downfield. Spalski returns from the 40, breaks to the right sideline, runs it out of bounds in his bump there and goes out at the 35. So Rainier, figuring they'd get good field position, put on a very mild rush. Spalski with a catch, a five-yard return, finally knocked down by David Sprecher, 5'9", 145, just a freshman, one of their starting defensive football players for Reardon, and they're going to mark it at the 34, so give him a six-yard return. First down 10 for the Rainier Mountaineers, trailing 6-0 with a minute 59 to go in the first half. Hayden is the new quarterback for the injured Congdon. 
Play fake, back to throw, setting up a screen. Has it in the hands of Miller at the 35. Cuts back 30, 25 into the middle of the 20. Cuts back again to the 15, the 10. And running hard is a first down around the six-yard line. Tremendous cutback running by Miller. Two or three nice moves off the beautifully executed screen pass. Monty Soliday finally ran him down. A tremendously well-executed play and beautiful running by Miller. You know, and it really surprises me that with uh, Hayden in there at the quarterback that they did such a great job of that screen pass. That's a touch, a timing type pass. It's very hard to master. Rainier with three blockers out in front. They did a great job and good cutback running gets them a first and goal situation. They're going to put the football at about the seven-yard line is where the knee went down, and Reardon wants a timeout. Let's pause 30 seconds with the score. Reardon six, Rainier zero, and threatening. Back of the King Dome in King Bowl 14 as the Rainier Mountaineers come to the football first down 10. First and goal, I should say, at the Reardon seven-yard line. Split receiver Sprowski out to the right side. The turn, the handoff to Miller running the quick dive, slanting actually over the right guard position. Works just inside the five. It'll be second and goal down around the four. Stop on the play, Jeremy Despain for the Reardon Indians. Rainier right to the football with a minute and a half to go in the half. Hayden, the quarterback, Gives it off straight ahead, running hard is Warner, the fullback, and Rainier now wants a timeout as he lunges down around the three-yard line, and Rainier will take another timeout to preserve as much as possible. Richie Wilborn, 5'7", 180, a defensive tackle and a sophomore in on the stop for Reardon, and once again a timeout down below. Let's pause once more with the score, Reardon 6, Rainier 0. Well, back at the Kingdom, about ready to get the next series or the next couple of plays underway. Rainier to the ball. Sprowski splits to the left. They're scrimmaging off the left hash mark. Hayden, the quarterback, running room to the right. Turns a pitch out outside. Miller sweeping to the right. Hit behind the line, and down he goes at the eight-yard line on a fine defensive play by Soliday, by John Marriott and Dale Fleece all around the ball. Fleece very, very quick from the secondary, knocked him down at the eight, and Rainier will try to get some points out of this. They will go for an apparent field goal, and the Rainier kicker, David Marquis, will be booting the ball from the 15 at the right side hash mark, out of the hold of shoots, be a 25-yard try, and now Reardon wants to stop the clock and let him think about it a little bit. 52 seconds to go in the half. We'll pause once again for the Booster Club with the score. Reardon 6, Rainier 0. Back at the King Dome, as we can see, Jason Congdon, the quarterback for the Rainier Mounties, lying on the bench down below. And uh, his knee has a big wrap on it, so obviously that's the injury. Okay, shoots to hold. The try by David Mark was the ball is down. The kick is on the way. It's good. A 25-yard field goal off the right hash mark. Marcus hasn't missed much this year. He's an excellent kicker. And the Rainier Mountaineers do what they need to do, Larry, and that's come out of that drive with something they draw within three. It's 6-3. 47 seconds left in quarter number one, two. Well, Dick, after the Rainier Mountain Mountaineers in the first quarter had that first and goal situation after the long pass catch to Sprowski from Condon and then fumbled the ball in the next play, as you mentioned, very, very critical that they get some points in this situation here. David Marquis with the field goal, and he's going to be kicking off for the Rainier Mounties, who definitely now want to make sure they get good all-field coverage and do not give up the big return to the Reardon Indians. Of course, you uh, were down in Rainier earlier in the week talking to young David Marquis about his prowess as a kicker. I don't know if he was talking about his prowess, but I know you are a very confident young man and an excellent kicker. He'll boot it off from the hash mark on the right side. Well, he's a family friend, fine young guy, and uh, you know what his dad was, had told me? Uh, he had not kicked a field goal this year less than 35 yards, so he set a Marquis family record on that kick right there. Peets and Wilborn will be the deep men for Reardon at the 25. 
creeping up and the kick coming off the right hash mark and forward on the ball is Marquis and he puts a, just a little pooch kick downfield. They were kind of looking for that. Uh -oh. Goes to Graham, the quarterback, who is an up man. Pitches out to Peach coming to the left sideline. 40, 50, 45 and knocked out of bounds in Rainier territory at about the 41-yard line with 38 seconds to go in the half. Back who got the ball and came back against the flow and put Rudin in position at the 40-yard line of Rainier. They have split receivers each way, running room to the right in a slot right fleece. Back to throw, Graham winds up, throws a deep downfield, pass knocked away at the last minute on a tremendous defensive play by David Marquis, who got in in front of Peets, who was breaking open at about the 12, and just at the last second, Marquis got his left hand on the ball and knocked it away. And incidentally, uh, Congdon has sprained ligaments in his knee, obviously gone for not only this game, but the beginning of Rainier's basketball ball season in which Rainier will have an outstanding team but they'll be hurt without Congdon. Second down play trips right this time for the Warden Club. A pitch out out to Wilborn sweeping to the right. Has the corner. 40, 35 dangerous runner to the 30 and knocked out of bounds inside the Rainier 25 yard line but hold everything right for he turned the corner. The yellow hanky is lying on the green and we're going to have a clipping call almost assuredly or a block in the back against the Reardon Indians, which will bring that play back. Stop at the other end, finally made by Jake Walker. Again, Wilborn with good speed to the outside, but uh, somebody got blocked in the backpack. It's a hold is what it is. In fact, the blocker uh, almost had the hat trick on that when he not only held him, but blocked him in the back, and if he clipped him, we would have had the hat trick. That's Todd Soliday, second time he's been caught uh, for one of those, and Warner was the man being held and blocked in the back, and uh, like I say, if he'd have got a clip as well, it would have been the hat trick. That moves it back to the 49 in Reardon territory, 26 seconds left in the half. And Dick, Joe Warner, who's a sophomore, 5'10", 185 pounder, with a lot of quickness and a real competitive fire out there and competitive spirit, has been a problem in that block situation for Todd Soliday, who's really had some problems trying to handle Warner. Second and 21 for Reardon at its own 49. They send a man fleece in motion. They play fake to him. Back to throw. Graham loops it out toward the sideline. Incomplete at the Rainier 40. Intended to a diving receiver. Peets who went down the right side. Dragged all the way back along the 40-yard line. Graham with a good strong arm. But threw it too long. Incomplete. Third and 21. Clock. 19 seconds left in the half. Marcus and Sprowski with defensive coverage. Well, good job that time by Rainier of keeping the front line defense. Not uh, a lot of rush there, but they had good protection to the outside. They did not want Rainier or Reardon to get outside that defensive coverage. Okay, Reardon to the ball. Running room this time to the left. Uh, double split receivers that way. Play fake. Back to throw. In trouble. Graham fires over the middle. Intended to piece. Intercepted by Rainier at the Mountie 45 yard line by Greg Myers. Defensive lineman dropping downfield. Gets in front of Pete. Picks it off and Rainier will have the ball. First down 10 at its own 45 with 13 seconds left in the half. That time, a good job. Myers dropping back. Rainier only having a couple of guys rushing on that particular play. One of those guys, Jake Walker, who put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Shoot splits out to the right, the wide side of the field. Quarterback pitch out, and then they on a reverse flea flicker back to Hayden. The quarterback looks up field, fires it deep, and it is intercepted by Peets of Reardon at the 36, and he'll go down at the 37 on the last play of the game. Couple of people were open. Miller underneath, overly deeper, but the pass went incomplete. And uh, finally the stop made by Warner for the Rainier Mounties, who is in the end the intended receiver as Pete's picked it off. And on that wild and woolly double reverse flea flicker, the first half comes to an end, and a good first half it was. Let's pause a minute here for the KGY Sports Booster Club with the score at halftime, Reardon 6, Rainier 3. Yeah, that... Deep to receive for Reardon will be Chad Wilborn and Jeff Peets. Along with Dale Feese, kicking off will be...
David Marquis for the Rainier Mounties. They'll be kicking from left to right on your radio dial. You know, and as we say, they're both ball control ball clubs in that first half. Rainier only had the ball five times and reared in four, and so they both like to hang on to the ball, and they both do a good job of it. We're set to go. Second half of play. The B-11 state title is on the line. Here comes Marquis. Boots it along the ground. Taken at the 24. To the 30, and stacked up there. That's Dale Feast, who's hammered right at the 29-yard line. And that's where Reardon will take over. First down and 10 on their own 29. Didn't get a real generous spot. It looked like he made a pass at 31 and was driven back, but the official says he stopped forward progress on the 29. So that's where Reardon will take the ball and try marching against the Rainier Mounties. Jay Brewer right there for the stop for the Mounties, and the Mounties will take every inch they can get at this point. You bet. Here comes Reardon, double tied in. Wishbone offense. Graham under center. And kind of a broken play. He has to take it up himself, and he's makes about three or four yards. Nice job by Graham. Looked like they're trying to run the option, and the option man decided not to be out there for him. That's nothing more scary if you're a quarterback to look out there and not have anybody to toss the ball to. So Jason did the right thing, and he just took the ball, tucked it under, and turned it upfield and got positive yardage. You don't want to get yourself in a uh, second and long situation, and he uh, averted that by turning it upfield. Defensively for the Rainier Mounties, up front, Vernon Hayden. Paul Griffith, Greg Myers, Jay Brewer, the linebackers, David Carroll, Brady Florick, Joe Warner, and Jake Walker. The two corners are David Marquis and Steve Miller, and Kevin Sprowski, the all-leaguer, is uh, back deep playing center field for the Mounties. We have that dreaded shoelace timeout right now. Offensively for Reardon, Jason Graham is the quarterback. The three running backs, Ken Johnson, will alternate with Hank Jackie, Jeff Peets, and Dale Feast, and Chad... Wilborn also will be in there. The tight end is Jeremy Despain and the wide receiver Todd Soliday. Here comes Graham. And again, second man through as Pete crosses the 35 out near the 40 before he's stopped there by Greg Myers. Nothing fancy, just straight ahead blocking and read the blocks and see what you can get out of it. But interesting enough there, Paul, in that last uh, play, John Merritt had trouble tying his shoes. And as you know, the Kingdom has a nice $3 billion dollars Diamond Vision scoreboard, and what did the camera decide to focus in on? Poor John trying to tie his shoe. <laughs> Enough for the first down. First down and 10 for Reardon. Double tight end, three running backs. Johnson, Peets, and Feast. Graham takes it. Second man through is Peets. Cross buck action out near the 44 yard line. Pick up of about four on the play. Joe Warner on the tackle for Rainier, and it looked like Pete's had more running room. Pretty good job by Warner. Yeah, did a nice job of shutting off once he got past the line of scrimmage, but Reardon is doing exactly what they need to do right now, what they want to do, and that's just get the ball into the secondary and just kind of chew up the, the mileage slowly right down towards the Rainier goal line. Second down and six for Reardon. Double tight end, three running backs. Graham under center. Takes a snap. Option with Pete's pitches out. And he is almost stopped, breaks a tackle, and crosses the 50-yard line. Steve Miller had him wrapped up about, well, had a shot at him, rather, about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Peets was able to keep his feet, and he's going to pick up the first down as they get into Mountie territory, about the 48-yard line. First down and 10 for Reardon in Rainier territory on the 48. And that's what happens with the option offense is this a game of inches, and if Steve Miller had been able to just wrap him up, get his arms around him, it would have been a, a huge loss, but unfortunately he got around to the outside and picked up the first down. Joe Warner ended up making the tackle. First down and 10 for Reardon. Second man across, that's Wilborn, and he's hammered by Paul Griffith, and Brady Florick smacks him right there behind the line of scrimmage, loss of a couple of yards back to the 50-yard line. And that's what you want to do to an option-type ball club, get them into second and third long situations. They do that, and they get out of their comfort zone. They might uh, have to make a mistake. So great job by the front four of the Rainier Mounties. Paul Griffith, six foot one, 245-pound junior. I understand he benches near 400 pounds, Joe. Wow. Here comes Reardon, second down and 12. Graham on a little mix-up, tries to pitch over the head of Wilburn. The ball is loose at the 40. Wilburn pushes it out of bounds. A good job by Chad Wilburn as Re Reardon will maintain possession. But all the way back to their 41-yard line, another loss of nine. It'll bring up third down and oh, about 21. A bad decision by 
uh, Graham on that play, Joe. David Carroll and Verdon Hayden did a great job of sealing off the outside, and Jason tried to do something that he wasn't capable of doing and making the fantastic pitch. It went over Chad's head, and Chad did a great job, did the smart thing, didn't try to pick it up. He just scooted out of bounds, and the possession reverts to the last team that had it. Wide to the right is Soliday. Feast goes out in the slot back position. Johnson and Pete's in the backfield. Graham drops back the pass, a little uh, screen to Pete. He crosses the 45 to the 50. Nice job by David Marquis not to give up the first down. They give up 10, 12 yards. Big deal. It's fourth or third down and 21. We'll bring up fourth down and about oh, 14 will caught 13. And Reardon will have to put it away. And you called it exactly right, Paul. But the thing there is don't give up the big play. Let him get the ball and then go out and play defense and make the tackle. Uh, but just don't let him get the whole 23. And it might have been gone for more, but he had to wait so long because Jason Graham threw kind of a balloon pass there. Back deep to receive the punt is Kevin Sprowski on to do the punting Jeff Peets. There's a snap. And a little bit of pressure. He gets it away, though. Sprowski on his own 20. Two, he tries to get around, circles the field to the 25, out to the 28. He ran about 55 yards there, Joe, and he picks up eight. Yeah, that's the old east and west running. It's kind of tough, but trying to get that corner wasn't quite able to get it. But Brainerd does have the ball. They've dodged another bullet. Now see if they can go down and score. Kevin, or I should say David Marquis was kind of lucky. He was close there yes. on a clip, but he held up at the last second. A nice job by David not to draw the flag. First down and 10 for the Mounties on their own 28-yard line. Wide to the left goes Shane Schutz. We'll run down their starting offense in a moment. Joe Warner, Steve Miller, and Travis Overly in the backfield. Vernon Hayden is the quarterback. In for the injured Jason Congdon. Hand off to Joe Warner around the left side, or check that that's Steve Miller, and he picks up a couple of yards, but no more than that. He'll bring up second down, and we'll call it nine. And John Marriott and Steve Scott McCall that time for Reardon did a nice job of sealing the play to the inside and not allowing him to get any more positive yardage than the one yard he did was able to get. Unbelievably, with the running backs that Rainier has, their major offensive force this afternoon has been through the air. Wide to the right is Sprowski. Hayden is under center. Takes a snap, drops back to pass, looking for Sprowski, making a move, and Pete's Gets in his way, doesn't draw the flag. Kind of questionable, but I think pretty good defense by Peets. Well, the umpire on the right side here started to draw it and then decided not to because it really was a good play by Mr. Peets. He was able to get back there and get in, in Kevin's face, and they're both going for the ball, and that's uh, supposed to be what the, you measure pass interference mm -hmm. is, whether they're both going for the ball. So brings up already third down and, and a long nine. Wide to the left goes Shane Schutz. Miller. Warner and Overly in the backfield. Hayden drops back to pass once again. Looks like they're trying to set up that screen. There's Overly and Hayden this time over throws him and that is a shame. He had three blockers Got a flag and no one out there and a flag comes in late. I think we might have a late hit or a roughing the quarterback call. Let's find out. It's from the umpire an unusual flag. It's definitely a dead ball foul. Going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct. Now they're calling ineligible man downfield. That is a bizarre call. It took them about a year and a half to call it after the play was over. What kind of call is that? That's very, yeah, very strange. Uh, well, he's got a surveyor out there trying <laughs> to find where the line of scrimmage is. Yeah, maybe that was. had his tricorder down there. <laughs> I don't know. A, a very late call. I can understand some of these calls being late, but that was about a, a, long, a long call to make that. And, of course, Reardon's going to uh, decline it. They do. It's going to bring up fourth down and ten for Rainier. And not even a real unusual call because that screenplay took so long to develop. But you're right, Paul. That flag took forever to come out. Guess he should have sewed it to his pants. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> maybe, was holding it, maybe he had to blow his nose first. Back to punt is Brady Florick. He gets it away to Pete's who has it at the 40. There should be a clip there, and it doesn't come. Holy cow, David Marquis is nailed in the back, and the, the referee refuses to throw the flag, so they're letting them play. Oh, hold on a second. Maybe if we wait a few minutes, it'll come. I'm not sure. <laughs> you just never know, because Kevin was doing a great job and had the angle. 
but uh, like you said on Jeff Peets, but didn't get the call right in the back. Uh, just truly blatant. I don't know what the referees are thinking right now. Maybe that long halftime, they fell asleep and haven't woken up yet, Paul. First down and 10 for Reardon. They go back to their double tight end with a slot back. And it's a wishbone. Or they're <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they call a flag on us. <laughs> poor, poor Paul Griffith. Uh, there's a flag, obviously, illegal motion by Reardon, but Paul Griffith is standing there. He gets nailed in the head with the referee's flag. What did I do? <laughs> I didn't do anything. Boy, I guess this is the state championship for the uh, referees, too, and they're not going to take anything, are they? <laughs> Apparently take not. Take that, ball player. <laughs> well, so it's a five-yard penalty. It's almost like the old single wing, though, Joe. They snapped it right to the running back. Interesting call. Unfortunately, we did have motion. brings it back, but... Now's the uh, time to bring it out because it's no tomorrow for either one of these ball clubs. Back to the wishbone, double tied in. Graham under center, handoff right ahead to Wilborn. He goes nowhere. No way, baby. Greg Myers, Jay Brewer, Joe Warner right there to nail him a yard behind the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up second down and 16 for the Reardon Indians. You know, if you want to talk about advantage, it looks like Reardon might be a little quicker of feet, but right now... Rainier's using their little bit bigger size and their strength to get through the line of scrimmage and block the, all the running lanes and the three or four guys on every tackle, as we saw that time. Uh, and when you can do those types of things, you're going you're gonna to compensate for their quickness. Second down and 16 for Reardon. Graham on the pitch, on the option again. He's stacked up. Pick up with one. Very nice job by the right side of the Rainier defensive side. Led by Jim Willis. And Dave Marquis and David Carroll and Verdon Hayden were all there doing their jobs and responsibility, which makes it much easier for the tackler and for the rest of the Rainier Mounties to get the, the job done. I, I don't know. We don't have it yet. And we'll have to ask Tom and when, they're, when they're done arguing over here. But <laughs> I'd have to say that Reardon has uh, probably negative yardage so far this half. Uh-oh, I confused him again, Paul. Third down and 15. 5.30 left to go in the third quarter. Reardon, six. Rainier, three. In motion is Peets. And Peets is going to quick kick it out of there. Blocked. And Sprowski lets the ball drop at the 31. Takes a Rainier bounce, and then it takes a Reardon bounce. And Rainier will have it first down and 10 on their own 29-yard line. So Reardon not wanting to take any chances, relying on their defense, and has held Rainier in check to only three points. Not giving up the big play. Have given up some big plays, but not uh, allowed them to punch it into the end zone as of yet. And they've controlled the ball this, so far this second half, and they did a nice defensive job right now. Come on, Mounties, you're our team, so let's get it going. Wide to the right goes Shane Schutz. Jace, or check that Vernon Hayden is the quarterback. And straight ahead, hand off to Joe Warner, finds a hole, gets across the 35 out near the 36. We pick up of nearly seven yards. That's going to bring up second down and a long three or four yards to go. You know, I, didn't ha I know you had an opportunity to see uh, Rainier play against Napa Vine. I have not had a chance to see him this year until today. But they are a spirited ball club, and they play hard and on every down. We see 11 people trying to carry out their assignments. Uh, you know, the only thing that they're down right now is on the scoreboard. Everything else, they look like they're the best team on the field. It is second down and three wide to the right is Prowski. Vernon Hayden, he's on her center. Straight ahead handoff is Joe Warner. And he may be close to, no, not nearly the first down. He's looking at the yard marker. He picks up about a yard and a half. That'll bring up third down, and we'll call it two to go. And you don't like to get in that situation, even though it is a good yardage, third and two, because if you don't make it, you're definitely going to have to punt. You'd like to be able to get that uh, first down right away and go ahead and start your next series of plays. So right now we've got about a third and a yard. This is a good place for the quarterback keeper. Just pick into the line and throw it up top. We'll see if they do it this time, Paul. It's less than a yard. they got a pretty good spot on the play. Wide to the left as Shane shoots. Hayden. He's at her center. Second man through, Travis Overly, and he'll be near the first down, and that's kind of a surprise, going over the left side of the offensive line, almost off tackle, that's kind of a dangerous play. And uh, they were lucky and fortunate enough to pick it up, like you say, uh, you don't really want to be messing with that type of play at this end of the field, because if they do make a mistake, by golly, Reardon's going to get the ball right back. So far in the second or third quarter, second half, Reardon's had the ball for two possessions in 11 plays, and they have 12 yards. Pretty good defense by the Mounties. Great defense. 
Here come the Mallies, first down and 10 on their own 40-yard line, wide to the right is Frowski. Hayden, he's under center. He drops back the pass, looking for Sprowski, underthrown, and behind him, nowhere near. And uh, a pretty good defense again by Peets, but uh, that ball was nowhere to be near anyone, actually. Yeah, and Vernon is not their first-string quarterback, but still he's doing an excellent job. It looked to me the way the ball kind of took a funny angle that might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. But uh, then again, uh, it might just came off his hand weird. As we know, it's sometimes your hand's kind of smaller at this level. Just We'll blame it on the Dave Craig syndrome. Okay. <laughs> Here come the Mounties. Second out and ten. Critical down. Inside handoff to Steve Miller. He picks up about five yards, and that's a big play for the Mounties. Now they can still either they can still pass here, but they certainly don't have to throw the ball down the field. They can get back to that that flat pass that was so successful in the first quarter. Yeah, and except for the long uh, screenplay they had, you know, and since Jason Congdon has gone out of the game, they have not been real effective passing the ball. And I don't know why they keep insisting on going back to that when their running game is picking up three and four yards per attempt. I think they should stick to that and just take it right at Reardon. Third down, and we'll call it four. Wide to the left is Kevin Sprowski. And there's a flag or the whistle stops play. Is that the timer official? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, there's a flag on the play. If it's against Reardon, it'll be very close. Should give him a first down. And what? it is. Great break. That'll be a, it should be a first down for Rainier. It'll be very close. They'll have, definitely have to take a look at this. If not, it'll bring up Ooh. third down in less than a yard. You might have to measure this, baby. Don't first give it down. to him. You betcha. I told you it was second down or third down and four. Offsides on Reardon, and at this time of the season, you can't be making those critical mental errors like that. You, there's no reason to go offsides. Wide to the right is Shane Schutz. Shane Schutz, say that ten times. Yeah, I was going to say, that was beautiful. First man through, Joe Warner, and he goes nowhere. Good job by the Rainier, or the Reardon Indians, rather. Tommy Miller, John Marriott, and Ken Johnson right there on the stop of Warner. So he picks up uh, about a yard. You know, there's no time to panic here. There's still two minutes to go in the third quarter. They are down 6-3. to three. But Rainier's front line, especially the middle three of Robert Hanna, Josh Walker, and Paul Griffith are doing a nice job of getting the forward surge. I'd like to see them, you know, just keep going with the blast play on to the inside, maybe later on try it outside. But there's no reason here whatsoever to put the ball in the air, I don't think, Paul, unless you're going to go with some safe type screen plays or something to that effect. But Paul Griffith comes out of the ball game having equipment problems. His helmet is busted. Probably going to go look for another one. Vernon Hayden to pass or Sprowski and a pretty good area to throw the ball in, just a little bit overthrown as Sprowski knows where the ball's going to be and he made a great move on it, but was uh, just a bit overthrown. You know, and uh, Steve Sprowski's, or Kevin Sprowski's a nice looking receiver. Reminds me a lot of uh, Bobby Baldwin for the Capital Cougars, who's not afraid to sacrifice his body. He just goes out there and makes the nice cut and tries on every play to catch the ball, whether it's there or not. And uh, if you do that, you're going to come up with it more times than you would think. Greg Myers is in the ball game for Paul Griffith at the offensive guard position. And Vernon Hayden on the inside reverse, and it he is nailed. Joe Warner is just hammered. Check that. That's Steve. No, that is Joe Warner. Loss of about four. Rich Wilborn on the tackle. And that's going to bring up fourth down and 14. And so the Mountaineers will have to punt the ball away. Yeah, Rich was just kind of standing there, and they reverse ac accidentally came his way, and he made the tackle. That was kind of a neat play for Rich. Back to, to punt is Brady Fort or Florick. Jeff Peets to receive. Soft Reardon, that's a live ball. Reardon, live ball, looks like Rainier has it. And they do. Yeah, all right. Again, the defense comes through for the Mountaineers, and that fires up the home team. Interesting play, Paul. The personal protector for the guy back there catching the punt was didn't know where the ball was. It came down and hit the back of his foot. And once that happened, it becomes a live ball. And Rainier, the ever opportunistic Rainier Mount, he's pounced on the ball, and they have a great field position. The officials talked it over, make sure the call was right. It obviously is, and went off. One of the Indians, as Joe stated, off his helmet. Off his helmet. Tommy Miller, the poor guy. 
You know, it's the one thing bad about these state championships is with the Diamond Vision, everybody knows who makes the Fupas. That's right. Marty Spillman. But the good thing is they also know who makes the good plays. Marty Spillman there to pick up the loose ball for Rainier. First down and 10 on the Reardon 27-yard line. Raiders getting excited. I don't know what the uh, delay is right here or whether the replay official is uh, going over. I don't know. I don't, I, I'm not aware of, uh, <laughs> that we've gone to the replay yet. But now he winds up the clock, and here we go. First down and 10 for Rainier on the Reardon 27-yard line. Wide to the right is shoots. Hayden under center. First man through. Joe Warner down to the 20-yard line. Pick up of about seven. And the Mounties are fired up. They're coming off the ball hard now. They've been doing it all game long. Uh, you know, I, we had a seven-minute differential of time possession in the first half, and since the offense has the advantage and they know where they're going, the defense will get more tired as the game goes on. And we're starting to see that, Paul, as Reardon is a little bit back on their heels and not pursuing to the ball like they were in the first two quarters. Second out and three for Rainier. Wide to the right is Prowski. The crowd gets into it now. Hayden under center. And the whistle stops. That's going to be the end of the quarter. They don't get the snap off, so after three quarters of play, it's still reared in six. Rainier in three, but the Mounties are on the move. We'll be back with more high school championship football after this 60-second timeout. Quarter number four, and the reared in Indians still maintain a slight three-point edge. Six to three over Rainier. The Mounties, however, have the ball on the reared in 20-yard line. Second down in three. And we're just about ready to get underway. Joe, a big opportunity for the Mounties. They've got to get it into that end zone. They certainly do. You know, now we come down to the final quarter, and if we don't get it here, uh, you know, it's just they're going to run out of opportunity. So they, they have in great field position first and second, I'm sorry, and four to go on the 20-yard line. A score here would really do a great for the B-11 title hopes of the Rainier Mounties. Again, second out and three wide to the right is Kevin Sprowski. The crowd gets back into it. Steve Miller, Joe Warner, and Travis Overly in the backfield. Hayden, second man through is Overly, and he gets maybe a yard. And boy, I tell you what, Joe Reardon has really had old number one's number all day today. You know, and as we see, the teams are scouted very well in this time and, and space and time. And so they have, as you say, Paul, so I'll stop bumbling here, they do have his number, and uh, he's maybe not the guy they need to go to today. They need to go to their hot, hot rusher and give him the ball and just keep blocking. Wide to the right goes Shane Schutz. Joe Warner goes out there in a slot back position. Hayden, Vernon Hayden, the quarterback, under center, takes a snap and hands off to Miller, but I think we had an illegal procedure against Rainier, and that hurts at this point as that's going to march him back five yards. And that'll bring up a third down and eight instead of third down and three. Paul, I got a question for you here. Okay. What's the best way to save on frame Michael Jordan pictures, hockey cards, or basketball and football cards? Maybe it could be the Super Saver Radio Hour on KQ92. Which is coming up immediately preceding this ball game, and they are going to have items for up to 30% off. So also ask for that Joe Sports special, which I'm sure Ron is just working on furiously <laughs> right now. <laughs> Critical situation for the Mounties. Eleven and a half minutes left to go in the game, but it's third down and eight as Rainier has the ball on the Reardon 25-yard line. Wide to the right is Sprowski. Fry or Hayden drops back to throw. Oh! He is now from behind, and Reardon will take over, I think. And they do. Chad Wilburn as Rainier tried to get cute. The old uh, flea flicker. Flea flicker. Hand out to the inside and pitch back to the quarterback to try and pass, and he is nailed blindsided. And they turn the ball over, so another big mistake by the Mounties. Just a hellacious hit by Jason Graham. He wasn't fooled for a minute. Stayed his ground. He made the big hit on Verdon Hayden for the turnover. Graham, the quarterback for Reardon, takes it over. First down and 10 on the 40-yard line. Feats has the ball. No, it's Feats around the left side. And he picks up about seven yards. So how the big mo turns on a dime. Holy cow. And high school football, more than some others, are definitely games of emotion. And right now, that huge play by Jason Graham, Reardon now not only has the ball, but the momentum and the emotional lift they need to hopefully get through this last 10-30. 
Rainier has to come back, get their composure, and make a defensive stand. The defense has to come through again for the Mounties. Here comes Reardon, and double tight end, wishbone offense. Grand under center, takes a snap. First man through, Ken Johnson, first time who called his name all day on offense, and he picks up about three yards. He'll be close to the first down, but probably about a yard short. And not in a good situation if Rainier can come up with the big play here, because I don't think Reardon's going to want to get cute. So it's probably going to be a basic ball uh, play. They're going to get the ball right back and have plenty of time. But uh, they can't give up too many more first downs and definitely can't give up a score at this point in the game. I'm sure we're going to see it again. Jason Graham taking it himself, as we saw earlier, in this short yarded situation. Graham's under center. Takes a snap. Now he's going to hand it off to Peets, who finds a bit of a hole, but a nice tackle by David Marquis, who knocks him down after a two-yard gain. And that's the danger of that short yardage offense and defense. If you can break through that first line of defenders, there's no one left back there. So David made a nice play, Joe. He did an excellent play because if he'd gotten by them, Jeff would have been on his way to the races and an uh, almost insurmountable score at this point in the game. But now Rainier, even though they do have another four downs for Reardon, they uh, have the ball in a situation where if they get it back, they'll still have plenty of time to score. First down and 10 for Reardon. Wide to the right is Todd Soliday. Jason Graham under center as the, the uh, feast goes in motion. And off to Pete's on the crossbuck action. Finds some room. Down to the 35. Breaks a tackle to the 30. Still on his feet. Sprowski finally knocks him down. Pick up of about 16 yards for Pete's all the way down to the 31-yard line of Rainier. And momentum definitely has switched from the orange to the white. They fake the reverse that time to Jeremy Despain. Then Jeff Pete's just... Cut it to the inside right behind Curtis Bennett and Scott McCall and got the rest after on his own after he got into the secondary. And once again, if, if Rainer and Steve Miller hadn't been there, it could have been a touchdown. First down and 10 for Reardon on the 31-yard line. The Mounties indeed need a big play here. Double tight end for the Indians. Graham is under center. Takes a snap, second man, no, the crossbuck action by Peets this time, no way, baby! He is stacked up five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Joe Warner on the stop for the Mounties. And if any time you needed a big play for Rainier, that was it. You get reared in a situation now where they have first or second and 15 yards to go. Now you can start playing Rainier-type defense and get the ball back. Great play. Second out and 15, here come the Indians. Double tight end, they stick with it. Nope, Soliday's going to split wide to the left. Check that to the right. Slot back formation for Feast. Pitch to Wilburn, try to get outside, forced to the outside, and then Greg Myers puts the pads to him. He picks up only about three yards. Wilburn ran about 50 to gain three. And decision time for Reardon. They had the ball third down and 10. Do they want to risk putting the ball up, or do they just want to uh, cross puck action, inside reverse, whatever? They have to make a careful decision here because they can't afford to make a mistake here and give Rainier any momentum. If anything, they're going to want to kick the ball and hopefully make Rainier drive a long way to get that go-ahead touchdown. 8-13, 11 yards to go for the Indians. About 10 and a half, actually. They get back into that wishbone formation, double tied in. Graham under center. He's going to option it, keep it, and he stopped at the 30, breaks a tackle, gets down to the 32, about seven yards short of the first down. Now are they going to try a field goal here, which they, they tried earlier? Should be interesting. That'd make it almost a 45-yarder. I don't really think they're going to do that. But you never know what Reardon's thinking, because if they do miss it, instead of getting the ball to 27, it'll come out to the 20. Isn't that right? That's right. So, it's, you know, it's not a bad try. What the heck? Looks like they're going for it, though. They're going to go for it in this situation. Fourth down and seven on the 27-yard line of the Mounties. The Mounties must hold here. Graham, inside handoff to Feast. A lot of room down to the 20, to the 15, to the 14. A first down for Reardon as they took advantage of Rainier really probably keying in on Pete's and they come back with Feast who picks up 15 yards in the first down. Jeff, Jeff Feast has been their hot back all day. He has 55 yards so far this afternoon. You said Paul, they faked it to him and came right back to Dale Feast and he went right behind Davis Brecker and Tommy Miller for the big gainer that just kind of let a little air out of Rainier's sails. Saving tackle by Kevin Sprowski, the Mountaineers in a goal line defense. Second man through, Chad Wilborn, and he's hit 
and then Brady Florek has to come across to wrap him up. David Marquis came up and would have stopped him right at the line of scrimmage. Wilborn bounces off of that, and Florek, a nice job, a nice job of hustling to run down Wilborn, and they pick up three yards of the ring up, second down, and seven on the 12, you know, we'll call it the 11-yard line. And Rainer's done an excellent job here, but they just haven't been able to put three defensive plays together, and that's what's killing them right now, and the reason why Reardon still has the ball and is, and is driving for a touchdown. Double tied in, second down and seven for Reardon. Second man through is Peets, and he gets stacked up about the seven-yard line, stopped there by Joe Warner and company. Uh, another big play here. It's going to be third down and three. Rainier has to stop him twice here. That's right, and a field goal would do him no good whatsoever, so it's definitely four down territory because with the clock still burning, six minutes to go in the fourth quarter, Rainier, no matter what, is going to have to at least go 80 to 90 yards for the touchdown, so they'll go for it on fourth down if they don't make it here. Double tight end. Here come the Indians. Third down and three. The Mounties need another defensive gem. Hand off to Peets. Find some room to the five. And down to the four-yard line. Kevin Sprowski, the first one there, holding on for dear life. Finally gets some help from Myers and Brady Florick. But another first down for Reardon. First and goal to go down to the three-yard line. The Indians attempting here to put a lot of pressure on the Mounties to be able to come back and win this thing. And Rainer made a nice play right there, but what they needed was a great play. They weren't able to come up with it. And the people that make the great plays are usually the ones that end up being the state champs. Here come the Indians. Wishbone attack. Hand off to Dale Feast. Oh, the end zone. And they're going to get oh. the ball. Holy cow. Hold on here a second. They're going to talk this over. He broke the plane of the end zone. Is it a touchdown or did he fumble first? They're going to talk it over because Rainier, I believe, recovered it. Obviously, otherwise, there's nothing to talk about. I think they're going to give him the touchdown. Oh, boy. That's a huge break if they do decide to give it to Rainier. Look to me from this, from our angle, Paul, that he fumbled before he entered the end zone, and it looks like Rainier did recover. If that does, that means it comes back out to the 20, and Rainier has a first and 10. Otherwise, it's touchdown Reardon. Uh, of course, it's... Uh if, if, of course, if Reardon recovered, there is no discussion. So, obviously, Rainier recovered the loose ball. And now they're waiting on the officials to decide whether it's a touchdown or... Such a big call, maybe nobody wants to make the decision. Going to come over and talk to the coaches. And we're still not sure exactly what's happening. We get the opportunity to watch here on the Diamond Vision. I know you at home don't have that, but definitely the... The fumble took place at about the two and a half yard line, so Rainer looks like they recovered it. Should be Rainer ball. I think they're going to say. Are they just trying to decide where Rainer gets the ball? They're going to mark him no. down at the one yard line. Feeble, feeble. This is a horrible call by this officiating staff. How they ever. I'm not sure how they choose these officials, but they have done a poor job in representing the officials this game. That there have was... been several calls. How they came up with this, I'll never know. Either he's in the end zone or it's a fumble. That's... They're going to mark him inside the one-yard line, second and goal to go for Reard Reardon. Maybe Where did that come from? They're trying to say that a tackle can't cause a fumble, Paul. I don't know. What a horrible call. And he wasn't down. And the quarterback keeps it. He's in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Reardon. Tainted, tainted, tainted. Come I'm on, Rainier, get your head up. Still got time. I'm trying to figure out where they came up with that call. Either he's in the end zone for the touchdown, or it's a fumble. Because he certainly wasn't down inside the one-yard line. You know, talk about creative officiating. Yeah, it makes no sense. It's either a touchdown, or you bring it back out and give it to Rainier. It doesn't make sense any way you do that. Why put it on the one-inch line? Rodrigo Lodi on for the conversion, and it looks to be good. It is, so Reardon goes out on top by 10. 5.15 left to play in this ball game. It's now Reardon 13 and Rainier 3. We'll be back with more championship high school football on KQ92. Welcome back to the Kingdom. I'm Paul Walker with Joe Sports Zabruni and some bizarre happenings here in the B11 matchup. But when all is said and done, it is Reardon on top, 13, 
Over right here with three. You know, not to harp on the point, because uh, both Paul and I have officiated at some point in our life, but our point being is that, you know, when you have an important game like this for the state championship, don't let the officials become part of the game. They're just here to make sure it's played fairly and let them make a decision like that. And where it came from is just totally ambiguous as far as we can see. Well, I believe one of the teams has taken a timeout, so with 5.15 left to go in this ball game, we're going to take one. It is Reardon in 13, Rainier 3 will be back after this 30-second timeout on KQ92. Welcome back to the Kingdom. I'm Paul Walker with Joe Sports. Well, Reardon will boot it away. Well, Rodrigo Lodi in to do the kicking for Reardon. Back deep is Travis Overly and Steve Miller for the Mounties. The Mounties need a big return here, Joe. 5-15 left. They're only down 10. They can get it together here. Yeah, it is a gargantuan-type pass, but they can do it. They've done it, and they've put points on the board all year long, so they can accomplish it. Kick off to Overly, back to his 5, to the 10, to the 20. He's got a hold of the 30. Go! And he is gone, baby! To the 15, one man to beat! Down to the 40! And that is where he will be stopped. And Jeff Peets is having a huge game for the Reardon Indians. Back there playing center field. He didn't even leave the line of scrimmage. He stayed there. Almost a premonition by him. He should stay where he is. And he is the one to make the stop on Overly who finally explodes here as Rainier will take over on the Reardon 40-yard line. The Mounties need a score, and they need it fast. When you have it back, the quality of Tracy Overly, you're not going to keep him down for the whole, Travis Overly, you're not going to keep him down for the whole game. He busted a big one there, folks, and they're back in the ball game. Here come the Mounties. Back to pass is Hayden, and he overshoots Travis Overly on the screen once again, but he was hit hard from behind by Hayden under center. Bounce back, flat pass to shoots, overthrown, simply overthrown. A little rushed by Hayden. Now the Mounties seem to be very flustered. I thought they had a little more time, but uh, this is what happens. You get in that wishbone offense, very hard to come back. Yeah, and uh, you know, you get the quarterback in there that's not used to playing too much. Vernon Hayden is not their starting quarterback. Jason Cognon going out in the second quarter with the injury. And, uh, communication, timing, all that stuff kind of goes out the window, Paul. Certainly does, and that's very evident at this point. Here comes Sprowski wide to the left. Hayden is under center. He takes the ball. He drops back to pass. A lot of protection. And over the middle to Willis, the tight end, overthrown again. A lot of time that time. Well, you know, you got on the other hand, Hayden has been bopped around there a couple times, and he rushed that throw, and he settled in and just thrown a strike to Willis which uh, we've seen him throw a nice ball, uh, he would have had the first down. And he doesn't have his feet set, he's kind of got happy feet, and it's a little difficult, the biggest game of his life, and he's thrust in there at the quarterback, uh, you know, make the plays or not, it's a tough call for a young man. So it's fourth down and ten. The Mounties need to get a first down ten yards away. Sprowski wide to the right. Still in the wishbone offense. Hayden under center, takes the snap, drops back the pass. Looking for Sprowski, and just out of his reach at the 20-yard line. And that's going to be very difficult for the Rainier Mounties to overcome. And Kevin Sprowski was open. He laid out for the ball, but was not quite able to come up with it. And we have 4.36 to go in the fourth quarter, and Reardon has the ball first and 10. Gigantic comeback attempt, Paul. Let's see what can happen here. Game of inches, and Sprowski was stretched parallel to the ground and was not able to haul that baby in. If he hadn't trimmed his finger laces, finger finger laces, his finger fingernails laces. last night, he might have had it. First down and 10 for Reardon, 4.36 left to go. Graham, hand off to Feast, and he's stacked up in the line of scrimmage for no gain, maybe a yard. The Mountaineers on defense have played brilliantly. Joe Warner on the tackle there. And Rangers made good plays all afternoon, but unfortunately in the second half they have not been able to put a defensive series together to get the ball back from Reardon. That's been the difference in the second half, and that's why Reardon is ahead right now, 13-3. to Well, they have. The, uh, I disagree with you a little bit there, Joe. The, I think the offense of Rainier simply has not done the job that they need to have done today. Wilburn on the carry gets outside. Should be another clip there, but, you know, he breaks away and is finally forced out of bounds. Understand what you're saying. They gave up right. a lot of time of possession. But, frankly, 
uh, they put the, the, the defense in that situation by getting inside the 10 a couple of times and down to the 20 and not able to get in the end zone. That puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Yeah, not to put the blame on the defense. Not what I meant, Paul. I, I, you kind of qualify that for me. Thank you. What I mean to say is that this is a day when the offense is not having their way and unfortunately the defense has not come up with a big play to compensate for the, on, uh, the offense disappearing today. Okay, I'll go with that. Thank you. Reardon, first down and 10 on the Mountie 37 yard line. Peace has it. Bounces off a tackle and then is stopped uh, three yards down the line. Paul Griffith comes up, puts a pretty big hit, but does not get the man to go down. Brady Florick, who's having a pretty good day on defense for Rainier, is over there to wipe things up. Going to bring up second down and seven for Reardon. You know, this is always the toughest part for me as a as a coach and an observer. Is, you know, here we have a bunch of Rainier fans that kind of got their daubers down right now, but I have no idea how many B11 teams there are in the state, but no matter what, Rainier's the second best one out there. That's the only two teams that can say that they're in the King Bowl. That's true. They certainly don't have anything to hang their head about. Here comes Reardon, second down and seven. Inside handoff to Peets, and he goes nowhere. Griffith this time wraps him up, and he picks up a yard. Now Rainier will take a timeout, I would imagine. Yes, they do. 3.02 left to play in the ballgame. It's Reardon 13, Rainier 3. We'll be back after this timeout on your championship football station, KQEU. Welcome back to the Kingdom. I'm Paul Walker with Joe's Sports to Rooney. Along with the stat man, Tom Beatty, up here, and Mrs. Sports, our executive producer. Doing Joanne a wonderful Duker job, as always. And Carol Sinclair back at Master Control. Couldn't do it without her. That's right, without, hope she doesn't have hat hair today. <laughs> so our situation here is 3.02 left to go. Third down and five for Reardon. Reardon leading 13-3. Our time right now is about five minutes past two o'clock. The Super Saver Radio Hour coming up just after this ball game, so stay tuned for your chance to make great deals for Christmas. In the meantime, we have some football. Third down and five. It is uh, snapped directly to Pete's, the old single wing style, and he fights forward near a first down. It probably is. Good job by Pete's. He's had a huge game. Pete's has, and Chad Wilborn has rushed for 92 yards. Of course, one of that coming on that huge. 57-yard gain, but the Rainer, or the Reardon is starting to run up the mileage right here towards the end of the game as Rainer's kind of a little bit back on their heels. That was kind of an interesting formation. We don't see that too often around Not here. too often. They're going to measure for this, but Pete's also uh, just on that kickoff return by Rainier. A one man to beat for Overly. It was Pete's who did a good job of breaking down and bringing down Overly. Otherwise, uh, Rainier is either within four points minimum at least and back in the ball game. Yeah, definitely. You've called his number an inordinate amount of time this afternoon, Paul. He's been a big factor in today's game. He comes up just a bit shy of the first down, fourth down and short. I would see no reason not to go for it. I see why not either with 2.47 to go and the clock moving. Here come the Reardon Indians. The Mounties need a break. They need a fumble. They need to stop them here. And Graham's going to take it himself and fall forward. And that'll be enough for the first down. Quarterback Graham. As they stack the pile, uh, they're going to mark him about the 29-yard line. First down and 10 for Reardon. I think we're going to have Rainier with the timeout. Rainier does take the timeout. So, 2.34 left to go in the ball game. It is Reardon 13, Rainier 3. We'll be back with more high school championship football on KQEU. 30-second timeout. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Tom, are we set on the Rainier uh, stats? Offensive stats? Total? Yeah, they're not. Welcome back to the Kingdom. I'm Paul Walker with Joe Sports. Reardon on top here, 13 to three over Rainier. 2:34 left to go in the ball game, and Reardon, uh, unless they fumble the ball, looks like they obviously are controlling what is happening here in this ball game, Joe. And Dan Schutz is ever being the cheerleaders down there trying to exhort his club on, and that's a tough situation when you're a coach and 
you're in the situation to keep everybody excited and positive about their program. First down and 10 for Reardon on the Rainier 29-yard line. Grab under center. Second man through as Wilborn finds a bit of a hole down to the 25 to the 20-yard line, finally drugged down by Kevin Sprowski. And if you're Reardon right now, all you want to do is keep the ball between the goal line, or excuse me, between the east and west out of bounds, keep the clock moving, and get out of here with your B11 championship. They like to score, big deal if they do or don't, because it looks like they're going to be able to get out of here with that coveted championship, Paul. Sure looks like that, and unless they fumble the ball here, Rainier needs a turnover. That's their only cho chance. Second down and one for the Indians. Graham under center. Second man is Dale Feast. Picks up the first down, down to the 14-yard line before he's stopped there again by Kevin Sprowski. And Sprowski plays about 15 yards off the line of scrimmage as the free safety. And that's not good when he's making a lot of tackles at this point. Yes, you've called his name very often today, too. And that just means that the ball carrier is getting into the deep secondary. And when the safety has to make the play, uh, usually it's in first down territory. So it's first down and 10 on the 14-yard line. Rainier burns their last time out of the ball game. 147 left to go. Let's take another timeout. Reared in 13. Rainier 3 will be back after this 30-second championship high school football timeout. Welcome back to the Kingdom. I'm Paul Walker. And Reared in leading 13-3 with a minute 47 left to go. About 10 after 2 here in the Kingdom. And back at Olympia, it's 10 after 2. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, Super Saver Radio Hour is coming up right after we wrap up the post game here with uh, Rainier and Reardon. And Ron Palmer and Shirley Williams will have a lot of great deals and bargains, and that is uh, going to segue us right into the Tumwater Championship game coming up about 5 o'clock. Here comes Reardon, inside handoff, and he's smothered by Joe Warner and Greg Myers. And uh, they got what they wanted to accomplish, though, Joe, by starting the clock. And I don't even think they need to pick up their first down now. All they need to do is run out the time down to a minute 30 left in this high school football season for the Class B-11. And the respect coaches have for each other. They're not going to tell their kids not to score, but if they don't score, they'd be just as happy. But if you're in here, you got to be thinking the game's not over until Millie Vanilli sings. <laughs> oh, gee, Joe, you're so original. <laughs> here comes Reardon. Second down and 11, and straight ahead handoff to Dale Feese, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. And all Rainier can do is go for the ball, and they're trying it, and uh, right now they're not successful. And that will bring up third down, and about, well, right, well, they lose a yard. So third down and 12. They can go all the way down to their, their use up their 25 seconds and take the five yards, snap it again. Or they can just go with one or two seconds to go, snap it, and they'll have two of those, and this game will be over with. It'll be history. King Bowl 14 looks like it's going to go to Reardon. Third down and 12 for the Indians on the 16-yard line. Graham is under center, and he hands off to Dale Feast, who finds a hole, gets down to the 10-yard line, but uh, their duty has been accomplished. Less than 25 seconds to go in the ball game. Reardon does not have to snap the ball. This baby is over. Reardon, the Indians from eastern Washington, Knock off, Rainier, it's Reardon 13, Rainier 3, that's our final. We'll be back with the post game after this high school football championship timeout on KQEU. Kingdom, I'm Paul Walker along with Joe Sports to Bruni, our final in the B11 championships. Reardon 13, Rainier 3. Right now, the WIAA is giving the runner up trophy, the presentation, to the Rainier Mounties. And congratulations to Jason Congdon, who was knocked out of this ball game early with a knee injury. He sprained his knee. And uh, he was also awarded sports person of the ball game for the Rainier Mounties. The Mounties obviously have nothing to hang their head about here, Joe. They have done it, had an outstanding year. The Mounties have, uh, Dan, under Dan Schutz have come together, and they have done themselves very proud. And with a couple of breaks, they would be taking home the championship trophy. But there's nothing wrong with being second in this case.
Many times when a team puts in a okay. new quarterback, the other team comes after him with their bears out of the claws out and ready to wreck and roll, rock and roll on them. So grand total of 118 yards for the Rainier Mounties. Not something they are real happy about, but by golly, they've got to be happy to have gotten here and uh, played before these fans in front of the kingdom. It's an outstanding year for the Rainier Mounties, and they've done, like you said, a tremendous job. And uh, we're going to go away for a little while, but not too long. The Tumwater T-Birds are coming up about uh, 5 o'clock this afternoon. We'll be on the air about 4.30 with the pregame. Up now is Eatonville and Efreda, and uh, we'll let you know how that game comes out uh, when we come back uh, with the Tumwater and Mount Rainier game. <laughs> 